I, I see my first slide there. So uh, first of all, many, many thanks uh, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be remotely with you. Uh, we have a very different uh, time. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, 30 past eight, so not that early. I, I managed to follow uh, this, uh, only this uh, part of the, of the, uh, of this uh, workshop. So, uh, but the presentation uh, about simulation uh, were very nice. And uh, I see many connection with what I'm going to present. So uh, this is the title, Digital Twins and Medicine 4.0 from in silico simulations to patent specific solution. Uh, I am Marco Biancolini. I'm a professor at the University of Rome Tor Vergata. And I am the CTO and owner of RBF Morph. Uh, we do uh, advanced mesh morphing, and you will see uh, that uh, there is, uh, um, in many situations, uh, even in this medical application, you will see a combination of what uh, I do in the university and what I do uh, with the company. So in silico, I have this video. Uh, this uh, something that we presented. Uh, uh, three years ago, and it's about uh, uh, the FSI simulation of, uh, of a valve. Okay, and uh, okay, let me move this. And um, you can see uh, that uh, for the FSI, this is something you have already um, uh, you have already considered in uh, in the other presentation. It's uh, really challenging to go for the FSI. Uh, it's not easy to have the right receipt. This is a part of the simulation only because it's without the full closure uh, of the valve. And in this study, we uh, were coupling uh, mechanical influence by advanced mesh morphing, getting the full movement of the uh, fluid mesh according to the structural one. And uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the intent is to capture with modeling what's going on. So uh, in silico, uh, is becoming more and more important as you can see. And uh, it is uh, very interesting to create a medical digital twin. So in uh, the slide that I have prepared today, I am bringing together uh, many different contributions that I have. I will start with a very short overview about uh, digital twin. And then I will uh, uh, go in depth with the medical digital twin and what is, what is going on, what we are doing uh, here, what we are doing with you, okay? And um, so let's move uh, on the digital twin uh, with this uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow, okay? So a digital twin uh, uh, is a replica of a real asset. And uh, we know today we call digital twin something that we used to do uh, also in the past, uh, uh, this is an example of, I, I think, very good the digital twin technology. This, this is a, a Toyota hybrid car. Uh, today is quite common, but in 2004, uh, it was uh, not that easy to do it. And uh, you can see uh, what we had in the past. The engine for uh, twinning was MATLAB mainly. And uh, the simulink simulation was embedded into the system of this car. And you can see uh, the digital twin uh, with the energy motor monitor on the dashboard of the car. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, for twinning, you need to write out whatever is required to have the, uh, the working logic on board. Today, we are uh, working uh, in a different way because integration is becoming not something custom to design, but we have standard, we have the functional mockup interface, uh, functional mockup units. And so we are moving to generic purpose uh, IIoT, so industrial internet of things platforms. And so the twinning is something that is deployed and uh, it's intended for uh, optimization of service, performance and maintenance. The example that I have here about technology is the GE Predix platform. That is one of the uh, the, the, the twinning platform available today. For the tomorrow, but we are very close uh, to that, uh, is uh, uh, to use the twinning not only by watching what's going on, but integrating high fidelity with system simulation 
And so combining the data that we have from the sensor uh, and from the historical data of the system together with uh, um, machine learning that is, uh, uh, we call this a physics informed machine learning, but we use uh, simulation. And uh, the example that I have here is ANSI Stream Builder, a technology we are using in uh, uh, different projects as I will show you. So uh, in brief, uh, with a, when we do digital twin is a, a, a complex challenge because it's multi-sectoral, multi-physics, and we need uh, to, uh, you know, have uh, different scientists and also technical experts of many different fields uh, working together. And this is not easy. This is not easy. And so um, uh, we want to uh, bring the industrial exp experience to the, to the medical field. And um, so first, what is the digital twin? This is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a cool image from G, if I am not wrong. So the idea is uh, uh, you have a complex mechanical system. Uh, this is, uh, of course, this is not a medical device. The idea is that you have a, in the same time uh, the actual asset, its replica, and you want to understand from the replica if something is going wrong on the actual asset. And so uh, you can prevent failures, so you can uh, correct problems, uh, and uh, this could be very good. And uh, twinning in the industrial application could be of a component, of a system of components, of system of systems. So you can go from uh, you know, a mechanical part uh, up to uh, a complete uh, power plant or a fleet of vehicles. Well, what is interesting is that with twin, we want to have uh, um, um, a sync between what's going on uh, in the actual asset and what we are replicating into the twin. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we have, uh, out of the box technologies to do this. Uh, Predix is an example from GE. Uh, Twin Builder is another example. I will show you something in detail about Twin Builder in the application that we have. And uh, um, this uh, FM, uh, uh, FMI and FMU interface, this is something uh, we started to learn uh, just uh, three years ago, three, four years ago, personally myself. Uh, uh, it's a way, uh, it's a standard uh, to uh, create interfaces between things. So you can create uh, a complex uh, software control. And uh, what is interesting is that using tools as uh, ANSI Twin Builder, you can uh, study a system, you can compress the system, you can create uh, a functional mockup units, and then you can put the functional mockup units working together. And uh, this is uh, um, the interesting thing of this is that is agnostic of the uh, technology you're using. So the FMU could be from simulation, whatever solver could be handwritten, could be MATLAB, uh, Python, whatever. Um, it's interesting to have a mention about this digital twin consortium, a uh, recent consortium, and uh, they uh, are creating a very uh, complete uh, website uh, and tracks and events and so on. And here you can locate interesting information and also some definition about uh, the digital twin, uh, especially the digital twin uh, that we see in the simulation. Uh, you can see that between the founding members, we can have, uh, we have ANSYS, uh, we have GE, we have a Microsoft, Dell. So, uh, you know, big, uh, big logo uh, of the simulation and of also the, uh, the, the, I, the HPC. So uh, now the topic of today, uh, the medical digital twin. The human body is for sure a very important physical asset, okay? So the twinning, it's really important in many situations as we will see together. So with medical engineering, uh, uh, we see that we can do in silico, 
uh, that is the name we use for advanced simulation in the medical field, uh, to be compared with in vivo and in vitro. Okay. Um, we can do CFD simulation of cardiovascular systems, uh, as we have uh, uh, considered in the presentation of today. So we can go in detail uh, on the uh, on the blood simulation, the valve movement, but we can also do uh, CFD simulation of the uh, aerodynamic behavior of the highways, for instance, or we can do structural simulation of the stress acting on the prosthetic, uh, on the processes uh, connected to the bones. So we want to create a patient digital twin, we call it medical digital twin, uh, to easily adopt the in silico results in the medical environment. So the translation. This is the main uh, objective of medical digital twin and twinning, is a way to uh, have our simulation, uh, speaking a simplified language that can be easily adopted uh, by the medical doctors, by the surgeons to decide to have input. So the problem as uh, uh, we have learned today, uh, for instance, for an FSI simulation complete, you need days, okay? So the problem is that we require high performance computing and it's really very difficult to have this simulation exploited as uh, real time tools. And so there are very important methods that are very well established uh, to have data compression. We can use a reducer order model principal comp component analysis use, usually is adopted for a static ROM that are key enablers to adopt digital twin in real time. So the main concept is I can do high fidelity simulation. I can do high fidelity simulation for this specific patient. Okay, I will do data crunching up front for the patient. So taking some time and then I will use the results compressed to the site. There is another important point that uh, when we go for medical digital twin, uh, we require to have the fusion of image data and digital one. So uh, we don't know exactly the truth because uh, from the image, we have to do segmentation to see what, what we have. Uh, there are situations in which we can watch inside, but it's typical for cardiovascular that we go with segmentation of, uh, of uh, uh, MRI or CT scan. And so uh, we have also another problem in data fusion that we want to create biomarkers uh, so that uh, the results of our simulation produce results that are useful to act. So are useful for the medical stuff. Okay, so we will see together something uh, like this uh, in uh, um, some examples, we are active. Uh, here I have four different projects. Uh, I will uh, uh, go in detail of two today. Uh, the first is Meditate, Medical Digital Twin for Aneurysm Prevention and Treatment is the reason why I'm here. So I'm very proud to be here and to have the University of Sydney on board on Meditate. And um, the uh, second project uh, and the third are, uh, uh, one is almost complete and then the other one is running under uh, the uh, F, uh, F for Euro HPC, that is Fortissimo project, uh, in which we have uh, two experiments running. One is about uh, uh, the modified blood tassin. I will show you something about this, it's cardiovascular. And uh, another, uh, it's about uh, uh, the drug delivery uh, in uh, human airways, uh, and uh, I haven't time to tell something about this project, but I can uh, give you references if you want. And the last one that will be not covered today is uh, Spinner, uh, almost completed. Uh, that is about uh, spine surgery. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we use the digital twin to decide how uh, to, uh, for instance, uh, size and position the screw into the vertebra. So uh, let's uh, present Meditate. Meditate uh, is uh, a Marie Curie project. We started the 1st January 2020, just two months in advance with respect to the COVID spread. It was not easy. Uh, it's a four years project uh, and uh, 
uh, is uh, an European industrial doctorate. Uh, this is the network. Uh, we have uh, 12 beneficiaries that are uh, hosting the ESR. We have 14 early stage researchers. We have 12 partners. And among them, we have the University of Sydney. And you, you can see that to add the university, we uh, decided to uh, enlarge uh, the map like this. But uh, we, it's really proud that we are international with you. And uh, we are covering eight countries. Uh, Meditate is uh, uh, enabling the medical digital twin with four research tracks. The first is uh, high fidelity CAE, so it's multi-physics advanced. Uh, the second is uh, the connection with twinning with augmented reality, optic device, and reduced order mode. The third is about uh, um, going depth about all the HPC, including GPU, to, uh, to speed up and boost the data crunching required to create the clinical um, simulated databases. Uh, the fourth is about big data. So it's uh, about uh, big data and data fusion of uh, patient data, image data, and simulation data. And uh, uh, the last but not least is about advanced use of additive uh, manufacturing for creating physical mockup uh, that are very useful for better understanding, for uh, um, uh, validating simulation. Uh, here, uh, uh, our 14 uh, ESR project uh, at a glance, okay? You can learn more uh, with uh, taking a look to our website. And uh, each image is representative of each individual research project. All are connecting all the research track. And uh, here, our 14 uh, ESR that are working at Meditate, we are alpha way of this project. Each, uh, each one is employed for uh, three years, okay? And uh, I will go uh, in detail of one of the, uh, of the project. This is the one by Leonardo that is working uh, with ANSYS and with Tor Vergata for the individual uh, research project. And uh, uh, the title of uh, the SR is Combined Use of Mesh Morphine for Feedback <coughs> Device and uh, Static Reduced Order Models for Achieving a Real-Time Hemodynamic Solution over Geometric Changes. Uh, I will show you something about uh, uh, what Leonardo is uh, studying. So uh, we are talking about aneurysm. And uh, we will see also uh, that for the study of the aneurysm, it's very important the modeling of the valve as well. And uh, uh, we are focusing on the AAA, that is the ascending, ascending aortic aneurysm, okay? And uh, uh, we want to uh, better understand uh, how surgery is decided and how we can help in supporting this decision. Currently is only based on the maximum diameter. If it's higher than a certain value, uh, let's uh, do the surgery. Otherwise, wait and see what's going on. Uh, the surgery in brief, okay. And um, so uh, in uh, when needed, uh, if the aneurysm is uh, too large, uh, we need uh, to uh, to replace and fix, okay? Uh, so we want to, uh, we want to uh, create uh, with Digital Twin, uh, we want to uh, give to the Sargon tools to better decide what to do. So to do this, uh, uh, first of all, uh, it's required with, that we create a workflow to go from images to simulation results uh, in a few seconds. It's not easy to go in a few seconds, but this is what we are trying to do. What is the recipe we are approaching? Okay, first of all, uh, to have a quick result, uh, an important way uh, is to have uh, the automation of the segmentation stage. Um, 
you, uh, you can see here, this is a 3D slicer, the software we use, it's quite standard. And uh, we start with the daikon and uh, we have added uh, macros in a 3D slicer that allow to make the segmentation uh, very, very fast because uh, it's specific to extract the aorta. Okay, it's not fully automatic, but semi-automatic, it's quite fast. So uh, this is in uh, 3D slicer. Then from the geometry, we can have information that are interesting from the geometry only. So we can extract advanced metrics. So not only the maximum diameter, but we can extract the center line and uh, other geometrical parameters. And so we can give uh, a risk uh, assessment about only the metrics. Then what we do is that uh, we have uh, statistical shape modeling. Statistical shape modeling means that we have created a database of many, many aneurysm, uh, dozen, we were close to 100, okay? And uh, so that uh, both the geometrical model and both the simulation we have are uh, compressed, squeezed. And so uh, in, in a few seconds, because uh, uh, within Slicer, we can have directly the simulation results without the need of recomputing nothing because we use the ROM to compute the simulation. The reducer order models, in fact, here you have an example in which you can see what's going on uh, if you have a ROM. In this example, we are changing some parameters that are shaping the aneurysm, okay? And uh, changing the parameters, you can see that uh, the simulation results are updating in real time. What we are doing is that we are able now to expose such results directly in slice. But what is the uh, detail of this uh, uh, metric? First of all, uh, uh, we have an automatic, from the automated segmentation, we extract uh, uh, the two lines. So the outer boundary and the inner one to create metrics. And, uh, from the geometry, we have also uh, the ability to study the, uh, the problem. Here you can see uh, how the simulation of the uh, valve uh, movement is uh, uh, governed by using advanced mesh morphine. In this case, uh, uh, you can see um, that we are combining the structural solver with the fluid solver, but we are not using the high level of details uh, we saw in the first animation and in the in the in the previous pre presentations of today. Why? Because uh, for the aneurysm, what is important is uh, to understand how the flow is changed by the valve. So it's not important, it's not important. We can accept a simplification in which instead of the full movement of the valve that uh, makes the simulation quite costly, we simply accept to use this kind of modeling. So we are controlling a cross section, as you can see here, uh, with the profile uh, of the uh, of the valve movement, and this helps to understand the impingement on the aneurysm that could be critical for a certain uh, relative angle from the flow and uh, the the aortic arch. Move forward. Uh, the model is very complex. We are considering the interaction with the spine. We are considering a zero pressure model because of, on the image, you have uh, not uh, the unloaded model, but the model already with the pressure. And we are also considering uh, the boundary condition uh, for, for the, um, all the circulation system. And here you can see uh, that uh, using uh, image data and using this model, uh, we managed also to have a calibrate of the a calibration of the simulation with the art uh, movement and with the valve opening. I move to another uh, example of digital twin. Uh, this is uh, uh, less research and more application, and it's interesting to see how the digital twin can be deployed. And uh, it's uh, Copernicus cloud-based HPC platform to support systemic 
pulmonary shunting procedures. Uh, we are partnered with RINA. Uh, I have this uh, slide by uh, uh, the colleague Emiliano Costa. In this project, uh, uh, we are uh, with Fondazione Monasterio, uh, RBF Morph, uh, in Silico Trials, that is a company uh, that is, it's an Italian company that deploy in silico solution. Uh, and uh, Cineca, that is uh, the Italian provider for HPC. Uh, the problem is about uh, uh, the, um, the congenital uh, earth disease. Uh, so there are situations in which uh, we need uh, to, uh, to do this uh, palliative operation that is the modified blalotassing shunt that is used, used for uh, uh, genotic uh, uh, patient. So is uh, uh, for, uh, for, for children younger than one year. And uh, um, the idea is that uh, with Copernicus, uh, we help uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, surgery, the modified lalotassin, uh, using a digital twin approach. And here you can see the scenario, okay, of the medical digital twin. We have uh, uh, on the bottom, you know, the medical stuff, uh, and uh, on the top, uh, all the in silico, the automation, and uh, the HPC magic we can do, okay? So the idea is that uh, uh, the medical staff uh, with a tablet or another device uh, instruct a little bit uh, the medical images to explain uh, where is the problem and what is the intended correction. And so we have uh, on, uh, from the DICOM, we create an automatic segmentation and from the input, uh, we create a first attempt positioning of the shunt. Once this is done, we, uh, with mesh morphing, uh, we make this surgery parametric. So we change the position of the shunt insertion point, the angle, the shunt length, and uh, we do uh, data crunching on HPC to run many simulations. Once the simulation are ready, uh, the results are interactive that can be used to decide uh, if this first attempt is okay or if there is a, a better uh, solution. And uh, this better solution can be investigated by uh, considering uh, the flow, because the problem is that if uh, the, the flow is not enough, uh, we don't uh, uh, help in the, in the stenosis. If it's too much, uh, it, it's worse. So uh, it's a really a delicate equilibrium. And uh, the objective of this uh, project was to deploy this digital twin in, uh, uh, within two days, 28 hours. So here are some detail about this, uh, this approach in uh, Copernicus. And uh, you can see that the workflow is quite complex because we start with the segmentation, then uh, we created an automatic uh, tool in space claim to apply the shunt, okay, the baseline CAD. Uh, then uh, you have the meshing, surface and volume mesh generation. And uh, then we need the, all the automation to create uh, uh, with the parametric shape, we do mesh morphing to do this, uh, you need to create uh, a certain number of uh, snapshot of uh, possible surgery so that these can be compressed. And once um, uh, are compressed later, sorry, the snapshot go then here into the HPC for uh, uh, data crunching. Once ready, uh, you can create the ROM, you have the ROM evaluation and you are on the other side. And uh, that's all for the workflow. And uh, in some figures, uh, you can see the complexity. Uh, for this district, uh, the high fidelity model uh, that is, uh, has been calibrated, it's about 2 million cells. It's enough. Uh, to have uh, uh, enough uh, control, we create 12 shape modifier. So uh, two position and two angles at each side, uh, the length uh, and other. Uh, we create a DOE and uh, to explore the problem, uh, we estimated that, that uh, we need at least 150 simulation. And uh, then uh, we have to decide what is the scheduling strategy on the, on the HPC. 
Um, here some detail about how the simulation has been uh, dispatched on the HPC. And here the results that are, uh, uh, in my opinion, very interesting because you can see here uh, the HPC with respect to the world time. So with the start, uh, we discovered that, that HPC was too much because it was 75% uh, of the time elapsed. Uh, so uh, we decided uh, to uh, understand what's going on if we uh, go uh, in a parallel simulation with multiple design points computed. So using three nodes and five nodes. Of course, you have an higher HPC cost and also an higher license cost, but we managed to uh, compress the whole workflow duration in nine hours. That is a way lower than the 48 uh, considered uh, at the beginning. So um, we then we are now considering this. Uh, uh, this is just uh, you know uh, a summary. I will not go in detail to say that to have this technology uh, deployed, there is a long, uh, a long way to do because you have the problem of certification, you have to go on the clinical trial and so on. So uh, the conclusion of this project is just the very beginning of this. So I move to the conclusion, hope to be on time, 30 minutes. First of all, uh, we can say that medical digital twins today are feasible, okay? And uh, we have, uh, uh, I call this the in silico parts, uh, that is uh, medical digital twin uh, driven by a fidelity simulation. You need patient specific data, state of the art multiphysic simulation and reduce order models and advanced mesh morphing for statistical shape modeling. This is not enough. Because to deploy these, we need a clear business model, and we are working at this. And uh, uh, today, we see that uh, uh, the public funds are the major resource we have to move this forward. And the certification is not that easy. But I think we are moving in the right direction, and I want to show you quickly to commercial. This one was uh, by team, and uh, uh, I spotted this. Uh, uh, when we were just starting uh, Meditate. Uh, this is uh, Professor Musumeci, uh, one of the best in class Sargon in Italy. And here you can see with the IT technology during, uh, uh, during uh, this wedding, he managed to help out and uh, he's using, you know, this uh, uh, fantastic technology. Okay, of course, this is uh, the, the dream we have, no? But it's so close to Meditate. And uh, it's really uh, nice for us, was really a nice message to see this commercial, okay? The commercial was intended to see that if we have a fast connection, uh, our world would be better, okay? And you see, you know, the happy family for the wedding and the happy family because, uh, because the, uh, the relative has been uh, uh, saved for the surgery. And you see that today, uh, so four years later, uh, this is a commercial from Meta, and uh, Meta is, uh, you know, is pushing this Metaverso, and uh, this Metaverse, sorry. And uh, here uh, you can see that this is useful for, for uh, didactics, but also the concept is that we can do virtual surgery, okay? And uh, uh, of course, this is only a message, but uh, for us as a community, for me, for you, it's really exciting to see that all the work we are doing is, uh, is now conveyed, uh, I think, uh, in, uh, in the right direction. So this is my last slide. Here you have uh, some reference. Feel free to reach me for any question. And uh, last but not least, uh, if uh, at the end I can share the slide and a couple of papers that are uh, related to this. Thank you. Thanks for that um, really stimulating and wide ranging talk on, on what's possible and what will be possible. Um, do we have questions from anyone? Okay, I'll, I'll jump in and grab one. Um, when it comes to build, to reducing the data from these very uh, complex um, 
transient 3D simulations. How, how big a task is that now? Is it something that's getting easier to do? Or is there still a lot of um, manual input and knowledge needed to do that? This is a very interesting question. So uh, today uh, we are considering uh, uh, the reducer order modeling and the twinning in two different and not strongly connected approach because uh, one way is that uh, you uh, use uh, twinning for uh, doing a reducer order model uh, of a dynamic system, okay? So with dynamic ROM, uh, we are working at dynamic ROM uh, the idea is that you have a single system, different input of the system, uh, many, many transient simulation, and then you can have the transient simulation boosted and compressed very quickly. Okay. On the static ROM side, so all the applications spotted today, we create the, um, the ROM uh, in a static way with single snapshot. However, the single snapshot uh, is not mandatory that uh, is received from um, a steady simulation. So what you can do today, and it's feasible uh, with uh, the, uh, if you have enough HPC, is that uh, let's say you run for each variation, uh, for instance, let's say you want to use uh, uh, twinning for understanding uh, how to improve the shape of a valve and the material to be used of a valve. And you want to create a ROM for this to investigate. Uh, for each uh, situation, you need to run a full transient simulation. However, in this transient simulation, you can decide to capture some important points. So the maximum opening, uh, pressure peak, and so on. Uh, and with this snapshot, so uh, same important time moment of the simulation, you can create uh, the, the, the digital twin. This is something that we are doing today. So for instance, for the aneurysm, uh, we are considering uh, the full flow in the simulation, but to do the ROM, we do the ROM only at a certain moment of the simulation. So having uh, in com the combination of a full transient, together with the full exploration, it's today uh, an open challenge, okay? So my perspective, uh, um, if, you, if we want to consider what can be translated and exploited today, uh, the, this approach of twinning, creating a, a digital twin uh, that uh, works in real time and can be created in uh, a certain number of hours, not months, okay, is feasible. Mm. And also uh, what is interesting uh, that uh, such feasibility is uh, uh, to do not have simulations at all. I mean, uh, in the project that I have explained this one, uh, the idea is that uh, you need the high fidelity simulation for each part. Okay, this is a scenario. And in this case, you have the urge to have the twinning uh, here. So um, the twinning is not to have a generic patient, but for that patient, you want to have the parametric surgery. In the other example shown, so this one here, sorry. Uh, okay, this one here, we are managing to say, we want to model and represent the generic aneurysm. That is, uh, uh, you haven't here a parameter like in the surgery, but you have many, many, many shapes. So with many, many shapes, uh, you can compress the shape and do statistical shape modeling. And so you are able to uh, have the results uh, of a new individual without redoing simulation, but just accessing the wrong. 